and the Senate Majority Leader of the United States Senate, Senator Robert Byrd. Got my razor, my gun, and gun, and we're going up crippled, going in a run. Going up crippled, you have a little fun, going up crippled, going in a run. In 1964, um, incidentally, a year that three of our civil rights workers were killed in Mississippi registering blacks to vote, uh, was also the year that civil rights legislation, historic civil rights legislation, was being promoted, and President Johnson wanted to sign it, but nevertheless, it was held up, bottled up in the United States Senate by Southern Democrats. And one Democrat in particular who was the last individual to try to obstruct this legislation was a guy named Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia, who for 14 hours and 13 minutes held a filibuster against this civil rights legislation. Senator Robert Byrd used the uh, uh, word three times on a national televised TV show. No outcry at all. Nobody said a thing, at least from the Democrat. No, the Black Caucus didn't say anything, the NAACP, no outcry. There's no price to pay when you're on the left and you make intemperate racial remarks. There's no price to pay. We say, well, it's just, we, we're making much to do about nothing. Race relations. They're much, much better than they've ever been in my lifetime. I think we, this is my personal opinion, I think we talk about race too much. I think there are, I think those problems are largely behind us. We, I, I just think we talk so much about it that we helped, I think, create somewhat of an illu illusion there are white I've seen a lot of white in my time. I'm going to use that word. But we've all, we all, we just need to work together to make our country better. Man. And I just soon quit talking about it so much. Today our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. He was a Senate icon. He was a party leader. He was an elder statesman. And he was my friend. Robert Byrd was a deeply religious man, a Christian. And so he understood that our lives are marked by sins as well as virtues. We know there are things he said and things he did that he came to regret. I remember talking about that the first time I visited with him. He said, there are things I regretted in my youth. You may, you may know that. And I said, none of us are absent some regrets, Senator. That's why we enjoy and seek the grace of God. There are a lot of people who wrote these eulogies for Senator Byrd in the newspapers, and I read a bunch of them. And they mentioned that he once had a fleeting association with a Ku Klux Klan, and what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. And maybe he did something he shouldn't have done, and he spent the rest of his life making it up. As also noted, Robert C. Byrd was a parliamentary library, a keeper of the institution of the Senate, and he was the institution itself. I, uh, for a lot of us, he was a friend, and he was a mentor, and he was a guide. Byrd's era as one of the most powerful men in the Senate is ending in the same week that Obama was elected to the White House. Why does it matter? It matters as a milestone of just how far we have come and how human beings can change. Robert Byrd was once a proud member of the Ku Klux Klan. He joined in 1942 when he was just 24 years old. At that time, a Klan official told him, you have a talent for leadership, Bob. The country needs young men like you in the leadership of the nation. That was then. Byrd renounced the Klan decades ago and is today one of the most admired men in the Senate. A few weeks ago, he movingly urged his constituents to elect Senator Obama.